The year is 1521. Spanish soldiers are marching across a narrow causeway toward the island city of Tenochtitlan. They have steel armor, crossbows, and horses. And in about 30 seconds, a wooden stick is going to punch a hole straight through one of them. This is the Atlatl, the ancient weapon that turned Aztec warriors into the deadliest snipers of their age. So here's something most people get wrong about ancient warfare. We tend to think that older means less effective. We assume that weapons from 500 years ago were primitive, clunky, and weak. The Atlatl destroys that idea completely. This thing could launch a dart at speeds up to 67 miles per hour. Modern testing has shown that it generates enough kinetic energy, around 2.7 kilogram meters per second, to punch through a deer's rib cage or go straight through a human torso. We're talking about a weapon that could kill a man at 50 yards with the stopping power of a modern rifle round. The Aztecs had been perfecting this technology for thousands of years before Europeans ever showed up. The name Atlatl comes from Nahuatl, the Aztec language. It transfers roughly to spear thrower. The design itself is simply beautiful. You have a wooden shaft about two feet long, roughly the length of your forearm. One end has a grip for your hand, sometimes with loops to secure it to your wrist. The other end has a small hook or cup that holds the back end of a long dart. The dart itself ranges from four to nine feet in length, then is a broomstick with feathers on the back for stability and a deadly tip on the front made from obsidian, flint, bone, or copper. Now, here's where the physics get interesting. If you throw a spear with just your arm, you're limited by how far your arm can travel, maybe two feet of motion. The atlatl acts as a lever that extends your arm. That two-foot motion becomes a four-foot whip-like motion. Your arm basically becomes a catapult. The dart leaves your hand traveling anywhere from 45 to 67 miles per hour. For comparison, a professional baseball pitcher throws around 90 to 100 miles per hour, but they're throwing a five-ounce ball. The Atlatl is launching a weighted projectile with a razor-sharp tip designed to penetrate flesh and bone. The range on these things was impressive, too. Modern recreators have sent darts flying over 100 yards. In competitions held by the World Atlatl Association, throwers have hit distances of 260 feet with speeds clocked at 100 miles per hour using carbon fiber darts. The lethal accuracy range, meaning the distance where you could reliably hit a vital organ on a target, is at around 65 feet for hunting big game or armored enemies. Skilled Aztec warriors could thread a dart through a six inch target at 30 yards. That's sniper level precision. This technology didn't start with the Aztecs, though. The Atlatl goes back around 30,000 years to the Upper Paleolithic era. Ice Age hunters in Europe and Africa used it to take down mammoths from a safe distance. And the first humans crossed the land bridge from Asia into the Americas around 15,000 BCE, they brought this weapon with them. It spread from the Arctic all the way down to the tip of South America. By the time the Aztecs rose to power in the 1300s, the Atlatl had been refined across countless generations. The Aztecs, who called themselves the Mexica, took this ancient tool and turned it into something more. Their versions were works of art. The British Museum has one covered in gold and turquoise, carved with serpent designs representing wind gods. Simpler battlefield versions were designed for quick draws, strapped to the shoulder so a warrior could lose three or four darts in rapid succession before closing in for hand-to-hand -hand combat. The flexible shaft of the dart would actually whip on impact, driving the point even deeper into the target. Aztec society was built around warfare. Every aspect of their civilization, from religion to education to social status, connected back to combat. Their capital city, Tenochtitlan, sat on an island in the middle of a lake. At its peak, around 200,000 people lived there, making it one of the largest cities in the world at the time. To sustain this massive population, the Aztecs needed constant tribute from conquered peoples, food, goods, slaves, and sacrificial victims for their gods. Their chief war god, Huitzilopochtli, the hummingbird deity who demanded human hearts ripped from living chests, was often shown in artwork holding an atlatl. His darts represented rays of sunlight piercing through darkness. Another god, Mishkoatl, the hunter, also carried one. The weapon connected directly to their religious beliefs, Every dart thrown in a battle echoed the will of the gods. Training to use the Atlatl started young. At age 10, 
Every Aztec boy entered a youth school called the Tulpocali. Think of it like a military boot camp combined with a monastery. Students fasted, fought mock battles, and practiced with the atlatl from dawn until dusk. Instructors, usually scarred veterans of actual warfare, would push them relentlessly. First came accuracy. Hit the painted heart on a straw dummy at 20 paces. Then came power. Penetrate layered cotton armor called Ishkahuipali, which the Aztecs quilted to two inches thick and soaked in salt water for extra stiffness. Elite students went on to the Kalmakak, priest warrior academies where atlatl training mixed with astronomy and religious ritual. These students learned shadow throwing, which meant silent launches from hidden positions, perfect for ambushes. Graduation involved a bloodletting ceremony where you pierced your own thigh with an obsidian blade as an offering to Tezcatlipoca, god of fate. By 15, a young man might join his first real battle carrying three darts in a reed quiver. Success in combat meant promotion. You capture four enemies and you earn the right to wear eagle feathers and carry an atlatl carved with your family's serpent symbol. Veterans customized their weapons. Some waited for longer range, others balanced for faster throws. A commoner who proved himself as a skilled atlatl sniper could rise to command entire armies. Failure meant either exile or ending up on the sacrificial altar yourself. Aztec battles followed a specific pattern. Before any fighting started, scouts mapped out enemy positions and noted weak points. The emperor would send messengers offering the enemy a chance to surrender and pay tribute. If they refused, war drums would boom from the 200-foot-tall Templo Mayor pyramid in Tenochtitlan. You could hear them from 50 miles away. Armies organized in three lines. The front consisted of skirmishers armed with atlatls and slings. Behind them came archers. The third line held the melee fighters, elite jaguar and eagle knights armed with obsidian-edged clubs called makawitl. The battle would open with a barrage of darts hundreds of them arching through the sky at the same time, blotting out the sun like a swarm of locusts. Snipers positioned on temple steps or in canoe prows would pick off enemy leaders specifically. The dart to a horse's flank could unseat a rider, making him easy to capture. Then the main force would charge. The Aztecs fought a special kind of ritualized warfare called flower wars against neighboring city-states like Tlaxcala. These were staged battles with agreed-upon boundaries. The goal was to capture enemies alive for sacrifice, so warriors tried to wound without killing. An atlatl dart to the leg would bring someone down without finishing them off. They could then be dragged back to Tenochtitlan for the priests. During the 1428 siege of Azcapotzalco, Aztec atlatl users pinned defenders behind their walls while assault teams moved in with fire-hardened stakes. In the 1465 conquest of Tlatelolco, darts rained down on bridge defenders, creating panic before the main assault. This combination of psychological terror and precision targeting made the atlatl invaluable. Everything changed in 1519 when Hernan Cortez landed on the Mexican coast with 500 soldiers, 16 horses, and indigenous allies who hated the Aztecs. The Emperor Moctezuma unsure whether these strangers were gods or men, allowed them into Tenochtitlan. That decision would doom his empire. The first major test came on June 30, 1520, a night the Spanish would later call La Noche Triste, the sad night. Trapped in the city after killing Moctezuma, Cortez and his men tried to escape across the causeways in the darkness. Aztec warriors and canoes swarmed around them, launching atlatl darts from the shadows. Bernal Diaz del Castillo, a Spanish soldier who was there, wrote that the darts came so thick it seemed like a yellow cane forest was growing over them. Many pierced straight through armor and killed men outright. Obsidian-tipped darts could slice through chainmail links. Flexible shafts bent without breaking, working deeper into the wounds with every movement. Horses, which had never experienced anything like this, panicked and threw their riders into the lake. Over 800 Spanish soldiers and their allies died that night. The causeways became slick with blood. During the final siege of Tenochtitlan in 1521, the Aztecs used the atlatl for guerrilla tactics. Their numbers had dropped from 200,000 to around 30,000 due to fighting and disease. Warriors hid in the floating garden islands called Chinampas, using reed blinds for cover while sniping at Spanish ships. 
Some darts flew 180 feet to hit gunners on deck. Barbed versions were designed to snag sails and rigging. Spanish accounts describe the terror of these attacks. One chronicler wrote that the darts flew like serpent tongues, tasting blood before the swords came. The weapon that had built an empire became its last defense. Here's the brutal truth about atlatl wounds. They were designed to cause maximum suffering. Obsidian tips made from volcanic glass created entry wounds about an inch across, similar to a 45 caliber bullet. The glass would fracture inside the body, sending sharp fragments into surrounding tissue. The barbed variants had rear-facing prongs that hooked into organs. Trying to pull the dart out caused even more damage, essentially performing vivisection on the victim. Spanish soldiers described their comrades clawing at dart shafts sticking out of their stomachs. The flexible wood would bend with each breath, working the point deeper. Extraction often killed the wounded man faster than leaving the dart in place. In Aztec warfare, this was by design. A wounded enemy who could still crawl was more valuable than a dead one. The wounded man would be saved for the sacrificial altar where priests would cut out his still beating heart. Skeletal remains from archeological sites show evidence of these injuries. Rib fractures from dart impacts healed crookedly, indicating survivors who lived with permanent damage. The psychological effect was just as devastating as the physical wounds. The atlatl's range meant snipers could stay hidden while picking off targets. Every rustle in the reeds might be a launch. The whooshing sound of an incoming dart, which the Aztecs associated with the breath of their wind god, Ejecatl, became a warning of death from an invisible enemy. How did the atlatl compare to other weapons of the time? Against the bow and arrow, which arrived late to Mesoamerica around 900 CE, the atlatl held several advantages. Arrows were lighter, around 30 grams, and flew faster at about 80 miles per hour. An archer could carry 20 or more arrows and fire rapidly. Bows were also easier to learn, taking months instead of years. But atlatl darts hit with 60% more force. They could penetrate cotton armor that arrows bounced off of. In windy conditions, the dart's flexible shaft stabilized its flight better than a stiff arrow. The Aztecs used both weapons, bows for volume fire and atlatls for precision targeting of high-value enemies. Against Spanish weapons, the comparison gets more complex. An arquebus, the early firearm used by conquistadors, could reach targets at 300 yards. The reloading took two minutes. Crossbows could pierce shields but jammed in wet weather. The atlatl could launch four darts in 30 seconds, far outpacing early firearms. Its silence made it perfect for ambushes where a gunshot would give away your position. The atlatl failed against one thing, plate armor. Modern tests confirm that a 100-gram dart traveling at 50 miles per hour will dent but cannot breach 16-gauge steel. Spanish soldiers wearing full plate could shrug off hits that would kill an unarmored man. Combined with superior numbers from indigenous allies, cannon fire, and the devastating impact of European diseases, this limitation spelled the end for the Aztec Empire. A 2022 study found that atlatl darts matched the momentum of a 357 Magnum round when used for hunting big game. Against a modern compound bow, the atlatl is less accurate beyond 20 yards but delivers more force at close range. For modern survivalists, it offers a compelling option, a lethal weapon that can be built from natural materials found in any forest. The atlatl survives today through enthusiast communities and academic research. The World Atlatl Association hosts competitions across the United States. At events in places like New Mexico's Chaco Canyon, Growers test replica weapons against historical records. Experiments at colleges have confirmed the weapon's ability to penetrate animal rib cages while bouncing off skulls, matching Spanish accounts of failed kills on horses that took head hits. Museums from the Smithsonian to Mexico City display original Aztec atlatls, inspiring new generations to study ancient engineering. YouTube videos pit the atlatl against modern bows and hunting scenarios. In one test, a dart dropped a hog dummy at 40 yards while an arrow glanced off. Professional hunters hit their targets about 50% of the time at 20 yards, accurate enough for hunting deer. The weapon reminds us that human ingenuity finds ways to kill effectively regardless of available technology. In simple physics, leverage and velocity can turn a stick into something deadlier than early firearms. In skilled hands would beat iron.
On August 13, 1521, Tenochtitlan fell. The last Aztec emperor, Cuauhtemoc, surrendered to Cortes. His atlatl, symbol of an empire built on conquest and sacrifice, was cast aside. Sniper's era ended. But his legend survived in the nightmares of the men who faced it and in the archaeological record that proves just how deadly a simple throwing stick can be.